Hi, I'm Mike. One man's junk is another man's treasure. I think that's how the saying goes. And here on the ranch, we have barns full of stuff that never see the light of day. And about once a year, I like to go through and do a little digging and see what I can find. Hidden treasures, winter projects, you never know what you might run into. As we go picking on the ranch on our Wyoming Life. <laughs> The bad part about having space to store stuff is that you end up keeping everything. We've got barns and sheds and even an old semi trailer that acts as storage on the ranch. And when something is is in the way or it is isn't useful at the moment, it ends up getting slid into one of these storage units. It's been going on for years. There's piles of God knows what scattered all over the ranch placed in storage by past generations and forgotten about and left to be found by us. All ranchers are hoarders to some extent. I've been there. You throw something away and two weeks, two days, two months, two years down the road, you realize that you could have used it for something. An old hydraulic hose that still has a good end, a wheelbarrow that you could have salvaged the handles off of, or even a box of hose fittings when you have a hose break in the garden. Ranchers store their stockpiles all over the place. For us, bigger things and pieces of equipment, old gates, pipes, even used propane tanks, end up in the dump. Not really a dump, but more of a holding area until something or some part is needed. For smaller things, they end up in storage in a barn or a shed and wait until they're needed again. Come with me as we take a look and see what kind of treasures we can find. This garage slash barn is our main storage area, useful for getting things out of the weather and the winter. We usually store the Model T in here, and sometimes the fire truck, but right now it's full of stuff that we had to get out of the way in the shop. Stacks of chairs we use during branding. The cake feeder, which we'll be putting on the gator in the next couple of weeks, that way we don't have to get out in the weather and cake the cows by hand. Also taking up the center of the garage is an old refrigerator we saved. The compressor is shot, but I'm hoping to get it up and running at some point. I think it'd look cool in the shop. Next up is Aaron's water tank that we'll be using to take water to the gardens this winter. All the garden water is turned off so it doesn't freeze. So this will be filled up in the shop and taken via Bobcat to the tunnel to water plants. Also, we have an old bandsaw and over here is an old wheelbarrow filled with tack. These are harnesses for draft horses. It's how they were attached to and controlled from the back of an old wagon. These were rounded up from old barns and put into one place, although I have no idea what I'm going to do with them. Over on this raised platform is an old bell. I think it was a school bell at some point and sat on this stand which was in the ground and was used to call the kids in from recess many, many years ago at a small one-room schoolhouse. This garage used to be the main shop on the ranch years ago, and some of the remnants of that are still evident, like this old drill press still mounted to the wall. A hand-operated drill press, and even though it's missing a lot of parts, I still like it, and I'm sure it saw a lot of work back in its day. Along with this old vise, mounted to the workbench, and it still works. In this corner of the garage, we get to some of the old furniture the ranch has been collecting over the years. Chairs and tables and dressers, along with steamer trunks. All earmarked for future refurbishing, if I ever get time to do that. In the same corner, an old Cub Cadet wagon, pulled behind a four-wheeler or a lawn tractor and filled with a bunch of stuff including an old-fashioned popcorn popper, a fly fishing basket, and an old creamer bucket, and this, an antique cedar for planting seeds in the garden. As we head into the barn attached to this garage, we'll find a majority of the odds and ends that end up being stored on the ranch. Buckets of old tools and fittings which had been collected, a lot of them from the methane sites on the ranch, where workers would forget the tools and leave stuff laying around. 
including more pipe wrenches than I'll ever need or use. Each stall on this side of the barn has been used for storage for years and years. As we move on to the next stall, we could find a bunch of old-fashioned wooden school desks, probably from the same school the bell came from. And in the same area, not very PC, boxes of old beer bottles. I'm guessing somebody in the past here was brewing their own beer and maybe even bottling it. I hope they got to enjoy it. Because in the end, I'm left with a few boxes of beer bottles. Here's another piece of beer memorabilia, an old wooden beer case. Someone was a Budweiser fan. Next to it, and behind this light, an antique sewing machine. A New Mansion brand sewing machine. Very cool. Manufactured in 1925. Unfortunately, not worth a lot. Millions of these were made, and millions are still around, tucked away, just like this one. But you can't imagine the kind of work this machine has seen. Headed out of this barn and over to the semi-trailer. This storage trailer is relatively new, and I'm mainly using it for stuff that I use quite a bit, but I don't want it cluttering up the shop. Random tools that apparently spilled out of their bucket. Some more furniture for refinishing. Extra net wrap that's used to wrap bales during hanging time. Also, an old painter's stool. Another antique school desk. A trunk. And a sewing box. We have one more barn to visit in our picking tour, and that's the main barn behind the shop. This barn ends up being storage for mostly yard, lawn, and garden equipment but it does have one surprise in it. This unassuming looking black box. Let's check it out. It doesn't look like much, but this box was technologically in between the chuck wagon in a wagon train and a modern RV. It weighs about 75 pounds. And as we get it out into the light, I can tell you the patent for it is from 1926, and it's a motorist's kitchenette. It was made to be mounted to the running board of a Model T or Model A car. You could drive all day, stop for lunch, and with different compartments for bread, coffee, sugar, and eggs, you'd have all the fixins for a nice picnic, including an ice box and a water dispenser on the side. It's nowhere mint condition but it was one of my best finds on the ranch. It originally sold for $50 and was probably a huge luxury for the car owner of the early 20th century. Well, there we go, the motorist's kitchen sitting on the back of a 1924 Ford Model T pickup. This is as good as it gets back then. Got an ice box, sit back and make yourself a sandwich. One of the cool things about living on a ranch is the history that you can find, whether it's the ranch itself or something tucked away in an old barn. Ranches in the US are disappearing at a rate of one acre per minute. And with them goes all that history. We're doing our best to keep that from happening. Thanks for joining us. Make sure you stick around as we've got some cool stuff coming up. Erin's getting ready to start her winter growing adventure in the high tunnel, growing vegetables with no heat in freezing temperatures and supplying our local farmer's market. Also, we've got preg checking coming up and we'll be getting back into our winter mode as we start feeding the cows once again. Lots of projects coming up in the shop and a whole lot more. As always, have a great week, and thanks for joining us in our Wyoming Life.